Hello, and welcome to this video series where we're looking at building our own custom application using UPS API. In this video, we're going to look at requesting our transactions. So this will be a collection of any time we've paid for something, transferred someone money, or even transferred money between our different accounts. Uh, we can get all of that data from the API. So again, let's head over to our documentation. And on the left here, I'm going to click transactions. So this is saying that we can make a get request to slash transactions and get back a paginated list of uh, each of our transactions. So we'll go through what that means in a second, but let's first just set up uh, our transactions request. Ignore that from a previous video, and I'm just going to copy our base URL and create a new request and go to the transactions endpoint. Now, when I click send, we're going to get our 401 not authorized error because we haven't attached our token. So again, if we attach our bearer token and send that request again, you'll see that we get back this big array of data. Um, so all of our different transactions. Um, and this one is a settled transaction for quick save transfer from spending for $1. So this looks like I have made a transaction from my uh, or transfer from my um, transaction account into my savings account to build up some of those savings to get away on that holiday. Um, but if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see that there is another key called links uh, with two keys underneath it, previous and next. So next is this big URL that, that looks a little bit confusing, um, but this is that pagination uh, part that was mentioned in the documentation. So if we have a look here, it says the returned list is paginated and can be scrolled by following next and previous links where present. So let's have a look at what paginated actually is. If we click that, it's going to take us higher up in the documentation to where it explains pagination. So a good way to think about pagination is if you had um, a result set of like 33 billion or whatever this is, uh, a huge amount of, of results. If you were to make a request for all of your transactions, you would get back this huge number of transactions that like no one's going to scroll through that many um, results in your, in your app anyway. And so it's kind of a waste requesting that much data. So what pagination does is let's say if we actually only had 33 transactions, instead of requesting all of those at once, um, let's say that we wanted to just, to just request 10 at a time. So the first time we would make a, a, a request, we would get back um, result 1 to 20. So that'd be our first 20 transactions. And then the second time we make a request, we get back uh, 20 to 30. And then the next time we make the request, we get back 30 to 33. So this only has the last three uh, transactions that we, that we made. Um, so this is a good way to think about pagination. So it, it's breaking up your very large result set into different pages. And you can specify the page size that you want for each of those um, by passing across page size equals and then whatever number you would like. So if we copy this and paste it into Postman and Remember that you need that question mark. So this is these are additional query parameters that we're passing across. So we're saying we want a page size of, let's make the page size just two and then send this. And then we're going to get back a result set. So this data is only going to have two transactions. So it's gonna have this quick save transfer and then one more transaction, which is another quick save transfer. And then we've reached the end of our, of our data set. Um, but then we have a link to the next page. So if we were to copy this URL uh, and create a new request, and before we forget, we're going to attach our bearer token and we're going to make a get request to that URL that looks very ugly and confusing, but let's not worry about that. Uh, when we send that request, we'll get the next two transactions. And then you'll see here that we have a next, which is a particular URL, and then previous, which will actually take us back to the previous page. Um, so our first two transactions. So right now we are looking at transaction three and four. Previous would let us look at transaction one and two, and then next would let us look at transaction five and six. Cool. So the way that we enumerate through pages is we can keep looking at whether what, what next is pointing to and going to that URL and grabbing the next result set and then looking at that one's next and grabbing that 
result set and then looking at that one's next and grabbing that result set. But when we finally get to the point where um, next is equal to null, it means that we've reached the end of the list. So in our example of this, when we do one to 20, our next would give us back 21 to, to 30. And then this one's next would give us back 30 to 33. Um, but then this one would have next set to null. So we wouldn't actually have a URL to go to for next. But at that point, we could we could iterate backwards. So we could say, well, we want to go to the previous of that, and that would give us back 21 to 30. And then we want to go the previous of that, which would give us back 1 to 20. But then this one would have previous set to null um, because there's, there's no page that we can go back to, which we can see here if we go back to our original request. Uh, previous is set to null because this is the first page. Okay, cool. So what else can we do with transactions? Um, if we have a look at... Uh, retrieve transaction. So this is uh, similar to our accounts. We can pass across an ID and get one particular account. So I'm going to copy everything up to transactions. We're not going to worry about a page size because we're looking at one particular transaction. So um, we won't have multiple pages for it. And since this one already has our bearer token attached, I'm just going to reuse this. Um, so we're going to go to slash transactions, slash, and then a particular ID. So we can pick one of our IDs from um, our previous request. So this big number here. And if we paste that after transactions, we can make a request for just that one particular transaction. And we can see all of its information there. So that's really good. Um, but when we are requesting uh, just the, the slash transactions endpoint, we're getting all of our transactions from all of our different accounts. And that might not be relevant to what we're trying to do. We might be wanting to just show um, the most recent transactions for one particular account. And so if we go back to our documentation, we can see that we can list transactions by account. Um, so if we actually use the slash accounts endpoint and then slash a particular ID. So this is what we did in the previous video, but then append to that slash transactions, we can get um, again, a paginated list of the, of uh, transactions for that particular account. So again, in Postman, we're going to create a new uh, request. We're going to attach our bearer token. Um, we're gonna come back to um, our savings uh, account, or we can we can make that request again to get back um, all the information for our saver. I'm going to copy this URL and bring it across to our new request, and I'm going to ask for slash transactions. So this is going to uh, look for this particular account in our in our big array of accounts. It's gonna give us back just that one account and then we can access all of the transactions on that particular account. So now when I send that, you'll see that we get back uh, all the transactions, but only for our savings account. Um, and if we were to make a request for our accounts um, and grab the ID for our transactional account and instead make a request for our transactions, uh, Sorry, instead make a, make a request for our transactional accounts transactions. Then we can see uh, the same transactions because they're going between two different accounts. Um, but you'll see here that these are negative uh, transactions. So these are transactions out of our transaction account. And then if we were to go back to our previous uh, savings account, Sorry for all the jumping around. Uh, so this is showing us negatives for, for our transactions. If we were to again send that request for our savings account, they're going to show up as positive. So these are transfers into that account. Cool. So that shows you a little bit about what you can do with transactions. The pagination stuff is a little bit hard to, to demonstrate with Postman, but when we when we go into um, actually building an application, it'll make a lot more sense how we can uh, enumerate that list and work out whether we're at the start of it or the end of it or somewhere in the middle. Awesome, that's it for this video. In the next one, we are going to look at adding tags to particular transactions. Um, it's gonna be awesome, so I'll see you there. Thank you.